Hello fourth year, welcome to another lesson. Today we are continuing on our whistle stop tour of fertilizers. So in our last lesson we introduced fertilizers as compounds which can be added to soil in order to boost plant growth. We talked about natural fertilizers such as compost, manure, but really what we focused on was our synthetic or man-made fertilizers. Now, in order to boost plant growth, these fertilizers have to contain three essential elements for plant growth, N, P and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. We looked at how plants on their own are able to fix nitrogen in order to boost plant growth. We looked at leguminous plants. Leguminous plants have nodules in their roots that contain nitrogen-fixing bacteria, allowing these plants to take nitrogen from the air and use it for growth and development. Now, not all plants can do that, and for the purpose of making synthetic fertilisers, we need to be able to fix nitrogen, so take it from the air and use it in order to make fertilizers. And the first step of this process is the Haber process. The Haber process was designed and engineered by a man called Fritz Haber in 1908. And it is the first step, and a big massive step, in producing nitrogen-based fertilizers. And it produces ammonia. So our lesson is going to be split in two today. In the first half, we are going to be looking in a bit more detail at ammonia itself. And then we are going to be looking at a second process, the Ostwald process, which takes ammonia and produces nitric acid. And it is this nitric acid which is used to make nitrogen-containing fertilisers. So first things first. In the first half of our lesson today, we are going to be describing the properties of ammonia and hopefully at the end you'll be able to describe some chemical and physical properties of ammonia. So, ammonia is very important as it's a feedstock, a raw material, for the manufacture of nitric acid and is hugely important in the fertiliser industry. Ammonia gas is made from NH3 molecules and it is very soluble in water. So ammonia will react with water and it will produce ammonium ions, which are NH4+, plus, they are positive ions, and hydroxide ions. This is a reversible reaction. You may see it represented with one of your double-headed arrows as well. So, let's have a think then just before I move on to the next. So, so if we were in school, this is one of the experiments that I would have set up to show you. Now, this setup involves a flask containing ammonia gas. It is hooked up to a syringe of water and it has... and is connected to pH indicator solution in water and it's all held up by a clamp it doesn't just float in mid-air. If you want to see this done you can go over to the main S4 page where Mr Shepherd has filmed himself doing this exact experiment. Now what we do is we press down on the syringe forcing water into our flask containing ammonia. Now the ammonia reacts with the water and dissolves in it, creating a vacuum. The vacuum pulls the pH solution in water from the beaker into the flask and it produces a pink fountain. So what exactly is happening here? So the small injection of the water dissolves the ammonia gas inside the round flask. When the gas dissolves, a vacuum is created and the water from the beaker moves up into the flask to fill the space created by the dissolved ammonia gas. Ammonia reacts with the water to produce the ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. 
Now the water in this beaker contains an indicator that turns pink in the presence of an alkali. Now since ammonia gas dissolves to produce an alkali solution, the indicator turns pink and the solution is called ammonium hydroxide. For anyone who's wondering, the solution, the indicator is called phenolphthalein. So the first property that we are covering in this lesson is that ammonia is a base. It dissolves in water to form an alkaline solution. So another thing that we could do if we were so inclined is to make ammonia in the lab. Now by making ammonia in the lab, that allows you to potentially see the gas, smell the gas, and have a feel for some of its physical properties. So what we would do is we would heat any solid ammonium compound with a solid alkali. In this case, we've got calcium hydroxide, a solid alkali, and we will be heating it with ammonium sulfate. This will produce calcium sulfate, ammonia and water. And this is the setup we would have. We would have clamped our boiling tube above a Bunsen burner that will have our ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide mixed together and placed in the bottom of the tube. There is a delivery tube through the stopper of our boiling tube and above that you would hold some red litmus paper. Now when the ammonium gas hits the litmus paper, as it is an alkali, it will turn blue. And this will happen when we heat the ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide mixture with the Bunsen burner. And here is what we would see. In fact, we probably wouldn't be able to see ammonia because it's a colourless gas, like air, colourless, not visible to our eyes. However, you would know ammonia was produced because it has a very distinctive smell. Very pungent. It's not a very pleasant smell. So for any of you guys who might have had their hair bleached before, there is ammonia involved. So you might associate the smell of having your hair bleached with the smell of ammonia. We already discussed how it's very soluble in water and the pH is greater than 7. So these are the key properties of ammonia that I want you to remember. It's a colourless gas with a pungent distinctive smell. It's very soluble in water and it has a pH of greater than 7. It's a base. So now that we know some of the properties of ammonia, let's look at some of the different reactions that ammonia can participate in. So first and foremost, it can react with acids to form ammonium salts. So if we were to react ammonia with nitric acid, we would produce ammonium nitrate. And since ammonium nitrate is soluble in water, it can be used as a fertiliser. Now remember, if you are unsure whether salts are soluble, you can check in your data booklet as there is a table of salts and it tells you whether they are soluble, very soluble or insoluble. So once again, like bases, ammo So once again, like other bases, ammonia will react with acid to produce a salt. So a little bit of a throwback here. We are to write the word and balanced formula equations, including state symbols for the following reactions. Ammonia and hydrochloric acid, and then ammonia and sulfuric acid. So ammonia reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce ammonium chloride. NHD is the formula for ammonia. It is a gas at room temperature. Hydrochloric acid is a solution. Its formula is HCl and it produces ammonium chloride which is an ionic solution made up of ammonium ions in solution, 
and chloride ions in solution. Ammonia and sulfuric acid produces ammonium sulfate and now the second reaction that ammonia takes part in is oxidation. Now we can oxidize ammonia using a platinum catalyst and when we do so it becomes nitrogen dioxide. So the equation for our reaction is ammonia solution plus oxygen gives nitrogen monoxide and water. What then happens is the nitrogen monoxide reacts with more oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide. So in the process of oxidation, ammonia becomes nitrogen monoxide and finally nitrogen dioxide. Now the reason that we have covered this reaction is that it is very important for the Ostwald process which is what we're going to go on to talk about next. Now, just before we go on to talk about the Ostwald process, let's for a little second compare ammonia, which we've just looked at, to nitrogen dioxide. Now, when ammonia was a colourless gas, nitrogen dioxide is brown. Where Where ammonia had a very pungent smell, nitrogen dioxide is quite sharp and acrid. Again, like ammonia, nitrogen dioxide is very soluble. However, unlike ammonia, nitrogen dioxide has a pH of less than 7. And as we said before, the process of oxidising ammonia to nitrogen dioxide is important in the Ostwald process. So in the second half of today's lesson we are going to be describing the Ostwald process and explaining its importance for fertiliser production. So let's just get stuck right in with how the Ostwald process works. So nitric acid is made industrially by the Ostwald process and is named after Wilhelm Ostwald who was a scientist that experimented for many years with catalysts. He patented a method for producing nitric acid from ammonia in 1902 and the method is basically the same today. So in the production of nitric acid there are three main reactions involved. The first two you may recognise from a few moments ago, are the oxidation of ammonia to produce nitrogen dioxide. The first step is reacting ammonia with oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide and water. This nitrogen monoxide then reacts with more oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide. This nitrogen dioxide is then taken, reacted with oxygen and water, to produce nitric acid. Most of the nitric acid produced is reacted with ammonia to make ammonium nitrate in a neutralisation reaction and it is this ammonium nitrate which we can use as a fertiliser. However, fertilisers are not the only use of nitric acid, we can also use it to produce explosives, dyes and solvents. So, like with our Haber process, there are three factors involved in controlling each of the three stages of nitric acid production. First of all is temperature. Now, to start with, the catalyst is initially heated to somewhere between 600 and 900 degrees. And once the reaction starts, you can then switch the heat source off. We are able to do this because the production of nitric acid is an exothermic reaction and it will keep producing heat energy on its own to maintain an ideal temperature. Now there is no need to increase the pressure above atmospheric inside the reaction vessel since increasing the pressure doesn't significantly improve the yield of nitric acid so we don't make any changes in this case because if we were to do so it would be expensive. 
In this reaction, we also use a catalyst and it is either platinum or rhodium. Now, in either case, the catalyst will have a gauze structure, which means it will have a large surface area for the reaction to take place. In this case, we would also describe the catalyst as heterogeneous, since the reactants are gases and the catalyst is a solid. They are in different states to each other. And just like the Haber process, there are some questions for us to answer. So what I would like you to do is to have a look at this flowchart here and answer the following questions. I suggest you pause the video here, have a go at it yourself, and then I will go over them for you. So, write the word and balance formula equation for the three stages of the Ostwald process. Stage one is ammonia plus oxygen gives nitrogen monoxide and water. The balanced equation is below. Stage two, nitrogen monoxide plus oxygen gives nitrogen dioxide. Again, the balanced equation is below. And finally, stage three, Nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen plus water gives nitric acid and again the balanced equation can be seen below. Where do the reactions come from? Stage 2. Where do the reactants come from? The ammonia comes from the Haber process and the oxygen just comes from the air. Why would we shape the catalyst like a gauze rather than put it in in lumps? Well, it increases the surface area, so our reaction will occur faster. And what is the name of the catalyst used in the Oswald process? The catalyst is either platinum or rhodium. Question 5. What type of catalyst is this? It is heterogeneous, it is in a different state to the reactants. Remember, our reactants are gases. Now, the catalyst is initially heated to 900 degrees, and once the reaction has started, the heating is no longer needed. Can you remember why this is? It is because the reaction is exothermic, so it continues to produce heat. So that is the Ostwald summary in a nutshell. Before we move on to taking nitric acid to make fertilisers, let's just do a quick comparison and summary of the Haber and the Oswald processes. So in the Haber process, our reactants are nitrogen and hydrogen, our catalyst is iron and our product is ammonia. The Haber process requires a moderate temperature of 450 degrees C and a moderate pressure of 200 atmospheres. The Oswald process involves ammonia, oxygen and water as reactants. We can use either a platinum or rhodium catalyst and it produces nitric acid. It requires an initial temperature of anywhere between 600 and 900 degrees but doesn't require heating throughout because it's an exothermic reaction. And we can carry out the process at atmospheric pressure. We can take our nitric acid to make ammonium fertilisers. Now salts containing ammonium are useful nitrogen containing fertilisers and they are made by reacting ammonia gas with acids. Ammonia is an example of a base, so when it reacts with acid we produce ammonium sulphate. This ammonium sulphate, as it is soluble, can then be added to crops to help them grow. In the same way we can react ammonia with hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and phosphoric acid. If in that final example we were to use ammonium phosphate as our fertilizer, we would not only be adding one of our three essential elements to the soil, we'd be adding two because ammonium phosphate also contains phosphorus. That takes us to the end of our 
Whistle Stop Tour of Fertilisers. Now, I have gone over this very quickly. Mr Shepherd and Mrs Leonard are doing live lessons on this material and Mr Shepherd is posting longer, kind of more in-depth videos on this material as well. Remember, you can ask me questions at any time. I'm always available over email or if you want to post on a team, whichever suits you best. If there's anything I can help you with, please let me know and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.